If you're local to San Marcos, you may have heard of Zelix, Pie Society, or even Dos Gatos. All of them are owned by two brothers, Chase and Seth Katz. The Katz brothers also have a restaurant that features food from India. It's called North Street Curry Shop, located behind Zelix. We didn't also want to stray away from any authenticity or traditional food, so we have like a chana and spinach um, or chana masala. People might think that opening a restaurant with such an unfamiliar cuisine in San Marcos would be risky. The owner saw it as a way to offer a creative menu option. We wanted it to be a little familiar. And by familiar, I think we mean like, you know, we have like curry tacos, uh, we have curry queso. The North Street Curry Shop opens most days at 11 a.m. Customers can dine in or order for curbside pickup of their favorite meals. For Bobcat Update, I'm Megan Buchanan. I guess you could say I'm still pretty lonely, but it's not the same kind of lonely it was back in March. I mean, one can only hope that after a year like mine, something would change. I'm sorry, let me rewind. On December 31st, we all stood with solo cups in our hand, counting down what was supposed to be the best year ever. We hope so, at least. On February 18th, I turned 21. Not complete without my first game phase from Melu's, of course. And then I look forward to the rest of what's supposed to be an incredible year. On March 11th, <laughs> you guessed it, COVID-19 was declared a global pandemic. Things started to go downhill pretty quickly from there. Things weren't shutting down here just yet, so we did get to resume our spring break plans and... <laughs> God, those were the last moments of peace and happiness I can remember before things really started to get bad for me. On March 28th, after weeks of being stuck in the house, doing nothing but binge drinking, I experienced one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> I had stopped drinking around 2 a.m. and around 5.30, I decided to follow my friends a mile down the road to their place. Uh, it had rained that night and I didn't know it and my brakes weren't that good when it was wet. So when I went to hit the brakes and turn, my car just started spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. I was having a pretty serious panic attack at that point from all the spinning and my car was pretty stuck and a little bit wrecked and finally the police show up and I'm like, they're here to help, thank God, right? Wrong. They smelled the wine I had poured down my shirt earlier in the night and they asked me to do a field sobriety test. <laughs> Standing, breathing, and existing wasn't easy to do in a panic attack that serious. So, to say the least, the sobriety test did not go good. I spent 14 hours in jail and 16 hours having the worst panic attack of my entire life, full of hyperventilating and passing out and throwing up. I felt like a failure. Like I had ruined my whole life. I didn't have the money, time, or mental capacity to handle all of this. I ended up having to call my Nana for some help with a lawyer. <laughs> Tears were streaming down my face and they quickly faded into a smile when I heard my Nana's first words. <laughs> she said, Honey, I just don't know how you can drink that wine. I just think it tastes so nasty. She said, honey, I'm gonna help you, but it looks like you need to go grab that weighted blanket I gave you to relieve some of that stress. <laughs> that sweet lady was right. But less than two months later, she passed away. She was hanging up these crystal sun catchers in her sunroom and she fell off the couch that she was standing on and she died. Just like that. I ran upstairs to my room and I get there, tears pouring down my face and I look at the ground and the tears slowly fade to a smile when the first thing I see is that weighted blanket that she got. And I get to hear that sweet voice again say, looks like you need to wrap that weighted blanket around you. A week or so after I got back from the funeral, 
I tested positive for COVID-19. My depression and anxiety were at an all time high and now I have to be locked in my room alone for two weeks. That was it. That was my low point. 14 days alone, no one to talk to, nothing to do, just wallowing away in my own misery. I had never felt so alone in my life and that sadness made me angry. <laughs> I was so angry with myself that when I was alone, I had to be so angry. I was angry that when I was alone, I couldn't just enjoy my own company. I couldn't just work on myself. I couldn't just make myself happy. That I relied so heavily on those around me to feel whole and love and accepted. But that feeling of anger really changed me. I didn't want to be sad and broken anytime I was alone. So I started to change. I started to work on me. I started doing things I enjoy and working on myself. I've been going to the gym, doing some mindful meditation, journaling every once in a while, picking up new hobbies, watching the sunsets and just finding something to love every single day. So yeah, I guess you could say I am still pretty lonely, but it's definitely not the same kind of lonely as it was back in March. It's a hopeful, happy, optimistic, whole, satisfied, lonely. This year, I learned a lot. So that's why I call 2020 the best bad year. <laughs>
We're still the kids we used to be